In this video, we will see how non-ideal solutions differ from ideal solutions and how that affects the colligative properties such as boiling point elevation and freezing point depression for non-ideal solutions. We'll start by reviewing the thermodynamics of ideal solutions. So the solvent and the solute have the same IMFs, and so since we're replacing self-interactions with non-self-interactions of the same strength, there's no net change, and so there's no change in enthalpy when we mix the two components. There's still going to be an increase in entropy, though, because we have more microstates when we mix uh, two substances than with one. Okay, so that's for an ideal solution. Now let's contrast that with a non-ideal solution. In a non-ideal solution, the IMFs that the solute and the solvent have are different. And critically, what matters here really is the average of the self-interactions. In other words, if I average the strength of the solute-solute interactions, so interactions that I have, IMFs that I have in pure solute, if I average those with the strength of interactions in the solvent, and look at solvent-solvent IMFs, if I look at the average strength of interactions in the pure substances, how does that compare with the mixture? How does that compare with the strength of IMFs between a solute molecule and a solvent molecule? So when I make the mixture, does the average strength of IMFs go up or down? If it goes up or down, in other words, if it doesn't stay the same, then we don't have an ideal solution. So we could have a scenario where the IMF strengths in the mixture are on average stronger than the IMF mixtures in the pure substances. If that happens, that's going to affect the enthalpy of the mixing process. Pause the video and predict what the sign of delta H of mixing will be for this scenario. We can figure out that enthalpy of mixing by remembering that the net difference between the IMFs that we break minus the INFs that we make is going to give us our delta H. And we just said that we're in some in this in this scenario we're having the IMFs of the mixture are stronger, and those are the ones we're making. So in this case, we'd be making stronger IMFs than the ones that we broke, and so this would end up being a negative number since this term would be larger. We can just as well imagine a situation that's the reverse of that. In this scenario, the IMFs in the, in the mixture are weaker than the IMFs in the pure substances. We can see by the argument we made previously, this is going to mean that this one would be endothermic mixing. So with non-ideal solutions, depending on the relative strengths of the IMFs involved, we can either have endothermic mixing or exothermic mixing. Take, for example, melting. So here we have the delta G of uh, fusion, so it's a delta G for melting standard, so we're looking at pure stuff, and we've got the enthalpy for melting pure stuff and the entropy term for melting pure stuff. We'll look at what happens when we add stuff, so it's not pure in just a second. Now, we know what delta G standard is for pure stuff at the melting point. So at the melting point, we know that solid and liquid are in equilibrium, so delta G for melting pure stuff is zero. So we plug that into the equation above. Okay, so we have an equation here that says that the higher the enthalpy of melting, the higher the melting point. Okay, great. So we're going to use this equation to explain all of the effects of non-ideal solutions on uh, melting point. Of course, we could just equally do the same derivation, repeat it for boiling point. I'll just write the result here. So the equation looks the same for boiling as for melting, except for now we plug in the enthalpy and entropy of vaporization. Okay, now remember these circles are saying that we're talking about pure stuff. So what happens when we try to freeze or boil a solution? We have to see how these enthalpies and entropies will be affected when we make those solutions. So to recap what you've already learned about ideal solutions in colligative properties. If we can see that here we've got delta S for fusion as we go from pure solid to pure liquid, and we've got delta S of vaporization. 
as we go from pure liquid to pure gas. And if we have an ideal solution, let's imagine that we move from pure to an ideal solution. As you saw earlier, uh, most solutes do not get incorporated into frozen solvent. So that when the solvent freezes, it's pure. So the solid entropy doesn't change. But when you, if you make an ideal solution in the liquid, its entropy goes up. So we'll put this line up here. And so this is our new entropy effusion. Notice we're not going to have the circle there. We're not talking about pure stuff. And the gas phase is unaffected. So now we've got our entropy effusion for our solution rather than for our pure solvent. So as we go from pure solvent to an ideal solution, we can see what happened. We change the entropy change that you get. So the delta S of the phase transition, oh, there's it. So we've increased the entropy change of melting. So when we go from solid to liquid, because the solid is pure, but the solution is not, the amount of entropy we get when we go from solid to liquid has gone up because we're going from a pure to an impure phase. We're melting into the solution from a pure frozen solvent. On the other hand, we're going from solvent that's in a solution to pure solvent in the vapor. And so here, this entropy change is decreased. So notice that both the solid and the gas are not changed. We're just changing the amount of entropy of the solvent when it's in the liquid phase. And so that's why this shrinks and this, and this grows. And notice what that's going to do to our phase transition. And you can see how that's going to affect the melting temperature. We've made our entropy of fusion bigger. So we plug that bigger number in here, and it's going to make our melting point go down. It's going to be a smaller number uh, in, in kelvins. OK, that's great. Now that's something you already know. What about non-ideal solutions? So notice in the explanation for ideal solutions, we didn't talk about enthalpy at all. Why? Because making an ideal solution doesn't affect the enthalpy, but it can affect, as we saw just moments ago, the enthalpy of a non-ideal solution. So let's look at the effect of having non-ideal solution behavior, how that affects colligative properties. So first, let's just look at the enthalpy of pure substance. So if we go from solid to liquid, we know that delta H for that is the heat of fusion standard heat of fusion, because we're talking about pure stuff. And if we go from liquid to gas, that's the heat of vaporization. Now let's look at not doing this to a pure solvent, but doing it to a non-ideal solution. OK, so first, let's imagine a case where we have exothermic mixing. Remember, that's a case where the mixture has stronger IMFs than the pure components of that mixture. Well, in that case, what's happened? Well, your delta H of mixing was negative, so you lowered the enthalpy of the liquid. The liquid's enthalpy went down. So look what that does. That decreases the delta H for fusion, but it's going to increase the delta H for vaporization, because once again, we're not affecting the solid and the gas phase. So look how that's going to feed in to our melting equation. And we take this smaller delta H of fusion, we plug it in over here. Ah, our melting point is going to go down. We're plugging in a smaller number here. So this is going to make the melting temperature go down. So this means there's another thing driving the melting point down above and beyond what we would have gotten from entropy changes. Now let's look at the case of endothermic mixing. In endothermic mixing, what are we doing? We've got a, a mixture where the IMFs in the mixture are weaker than the IMFs in the pure stuff. Because if it's endothermic, we've actually made the liquid less favorable. Its enthalpy is higher. You can see we move the enthalpy of the liquid up here. So in every case, we've got solid, liquid, and gas. But in this case, we've got a liquid with a higher enthalpy because we had endothermic mixing. OK, so look what that does. That took our original heat of fusion and made it bigger. So if we have a bigger heat of fusion, what's going to happen? It's going to come over here, and we're going to have that's going to actually move the melting point up. So whatever, whatever melting point depression we got from entropy would actually be somewhat counteracted by this enthalpic effect. So the bottom line from this is that 
we have melting point depressions that are predicted by ideal solution theory and the constants that you look up for the cryoscopic constants are based on ideal solution theory and that assumes ideal solution behavior. But if your solute and your solvent don't form an ideal solution, you can get deviations from that. So your melting point depression could be less or more than what is predicted by ideal solution theory.